Hello everyone, this is Foxy Papa Smurf, or FPS Gamer for short, and today I'm bringing you some exciting news regarding the Xbox One and some updates that are coming to the system. As most of you probably already know, Microsoft's new operating system, Windows 10, is releasing later this month, July 29th. However, because I'm part of the technical preview program, I was able to get access to the operating system early. And this new operating system brings a lot of new exciting features to the Windows platform, but for gamers, there's a lot of really cool and exciting updates. First and foremost is something called game streaming, which is what most of you are probably here to see. Game streaming is the ability to stream your Xbox One to your PC or another Windows 10 enabled device. So your Xbox is doing all the power and your device running Windows 10 is just showing whatever the Xbox is doing. And this opens up a whole new level of flexibility and interactivity for gamers. So let's take a closer look as to how this works. As you can see, I have my TV running my Xbox One, and also my PC in front of me that my controller is actually connected to. On this machine, I have Windows 10 running, and I have the new Xbox app running on it as well, and through that app, I'm able to stream my Xbox to my PC. And whatever I'm doing on the Xbox is being shown on the PC as well. For those of you with a keen eye, you might be able to notice subtle differences between what's being shown on the TV and what's being shown on the PC. Most importantly, it's slightly behind whatever I'm doing on the actual Xbox. But this latency is so small that I think most people won't even notice it. And just to demonstrate that it really is playable without the use of your TV, I went ahead and shut it off and played without it. And on online multiplayer, especially with ranged weapons like a battle rifle and a sniper rifle, it's very easy to notice subtle differences in latency. Even though I'm not a professional gamer by any means, I do play enough to notice differences like this. And while the latency definitely didn't break the game, it was ever-present and I noticed it throughout the entire match. But as I said, I think most people won't notice it, and if you do notice it, it's not bad enough to really break it for you. But let's take a look at how this works. So this is Windows 10, and if you guys would like a further in-depth review of Windows 10, let me know in the comments below. My console is already connected to my PC, and once you're connected, all you need to do is go into the system settings and hit stream. It connects to your Xbox, and then you're ready to go. It's that simple. Now this is footage taken directly from my PC. I will preface this footage by saying that any latency, any frame rate drops, any low quality footage is due exclusively to the media capture software I have on my computer. It's not very good. The actual image I was seeing on the Xbox was very crisp, very clean. While it wasn't at 60 frames per second and I doubt it was 1080p, it was still very, very good. By no means do I have a top of the line computer or a fast internet connection at all. And even without that, I still managed to get quite a good response from the game streaming. So I do apologize for low quality footage, but again, it's not due to the streaming itself. It's due to the video capture software I have on my computer. Overall, I was able to play very competitively and play some great matches playing through my PC, even though there was a little bit of a latency issue. It's important to keep in mind that this is still weeks before Windows 10 is supposed to come out, probably months before the general public gets an update that will release the live streaming. So this is all very, very pre-release software, and for something this early in development, it's really exciting to see how well it works, because honestly, it can only get better from here, and it's already pretty good. Like any new technology that comes out, it's not quite there, but it's close enough, and it's exciting enough that you know it will get there. And when that happens, it's going to open up a whole new world for gamers. And when you're done streaming, it's really easy to back out. You just hit escape, or jiggle the mouse, and you'll see a few icons appear on top. You'll hit the stop streaming button. And because I'm in the preview program, it asked me to rate my experience. As I mentioned previously, it's going to bring a whole new level of flexibility to console gamers. No longer are you tied directly to the TV in the same room as your Xbox. If you have a Windows 10 device, you can move your gaming into another room entirely, as long as you're on the same home network as your console. Now see that I'm connected through an ethernet line, and I have to say the performance gained by using a direct connection is far and away better than trying to do it over Wi-Fi. Like I said, my Wi-Fi connection isn't the best. I think I'm sitting at about 40 megabytes. So it's nothing stellar, but even doing it through Wi-Fi, I was able to accomplish some streaming, but it was nothing compared to doing a direct connection to my router itself. So if you are going to try this out, I would highly recommend doing that, not trying to do it over Wi-Fi. And this can be done really from anywhere that you can have connection to your Xbox. And to show you the latency that I was talking about, you'll see me firing the trigger with my right hand and the image showing up on the computer 
it's really not that big of a deal. Some of you more professional gamers out there will notice it, because I know I notice it, but I would say a good 80% of people out there won't. And if it be the bathroom, so be it. Just do your business while you're playing some Halo. I sure did. While there are some certain logistical issues while trying to play Xbox in the shower, and I really wouldn't recommend doing this, I did it just so you could see that it's possible. And this extends beyond games as well. By accessing the Xbox button through the computer, you now go back to the Xbox home menu, and you have access to the full array of games and apps that come on your console. So you can listen to some music via the Xbox Music app, or watch something on Netflix or Hulu, and jump right back into your game. Well, thank you guys for taking this exclusive look at Xbox streaming. I'm excited for Windows 10 and for all the features that are coming in the near future and also a few months down the line as well. Eventually it's rumored that you won't have to be on the same home network as your console. You could be really anywhere and as long as you have a decent internet connection, you'll be able to connect to your Xbox. So you could be in the other room, you could be in a Starbucks down the road, or you could be on the other end of the planet I suppose. As long as you're still connected to your Xbox, the hope is that you'll one day be able to take your Xbox anywhere. And that would be pretty cool. While I did sign up for the preview program and for the technical Windows 10 preview, I wouldn't recommend doing it at this point. Windows 10 is only three weeks from coming out. I would just wait for it because the frustration and the tedious endeavors I had to go through to get this to work really wasn't worth the frustration, but I did it for you guys because I love you. Well, if you enjoyed this, please leave a like if there's anything else you'd like to see pertaining to Windows 10, the Xbox preview program, Windows streaming, or the Xbox app. Please leave a comment down below, and I'll make a video of it for you. Share this with anyone else who might find it interesting and informative, and I'll catch you guys next time.